Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome to another Island Sanctuary video. So today, I'm going to show you guys how to level up in your Island Sanctuary. Alright, so each time you level up, you'll have access to upgrades to your facilities, make new paths, and also upgrade your cozy cabin, and also extend your pastures and your crops. So when you've done the tutorial, you'll automatically be hit with level 4, which means you're going to be upgrading your cabin to number two all right this will unlock the ability to expand your pasture and your crops to rank two which i've already done ahead of time the other thing you want to do is make sure that you build your second facility which i've already did that too they will let you know what materials that you need and all you have to do is go out there and gather them so you will get experience points for upgrading your facility, so 1425 experience. Now, that's going to be one time thing only until you upgrade it the second time, which is going to be, I think, around rank 6. So you want to make sure you do your cabin and your facilities at rank 4. Next, once you've done your cabin, you're going to do your pasture and your crops. It's going to take a thousand blue calories in order to upgrade them, which is obviously what you're needing for. So I've previously done that already. So let's go ahead and expand the pasture. It takes about two to three hours to get, the, to get it done. You still have access to it, so you don't worry about not being able to use it. The pasture has now been expanded, so now we're able to carry more animals. Now we can extend the crops. Now, as you can see, the pasture and the crops do not give you any experience for leveling them up, but you have access to more. So now when you plant your second batch, you'll now get 120 times two. So you're gonna get 240 experience every two days because that's how long it takes for your crops to grow. Now, I highly recommend that you sow one batch of pumpkins and one cabbage because that way when you are feeding your animals you are able to give them better feed which will increase their mood which is going to be helpful when gathering rare materials that they drop so make sure you have one set of pumpkins and one set of cabbage the pumpkins should automatically be grown from the start and the cabbage is going to be in this area there which is going to be at x17.2 y17.8 and the pumpkins will be over here at x19.9 y26.2 in case you want more pumpkin seeds now your animals will give you 50 points of experience every single time you gather their leavings this is once per day that we know of and usually it's in the morning so when you reach the maximum which is 20 animals you will be able to get a thousand points of experience every single day and obviously you're going to be needing these materials to make handicrafts which is going to be the next thing for experience so when you're first starting out you have access to very limited items because you don't have a lot of materials that you need to craft some of this stuff so when you're starting out i highly recommend that you start off with potions and fire sand make sure that you go one then the other then the other to get efficiency bonus this will give your mammoths the ability to make more than one item without using more materials and also this will increase your groove which will give you more experience and more calories or blues so you want to make sure they have your efficiency bonus running at all times your groove will go up based on how many landmarks you have up to a max of 35 groove when you do not have enough materials it will tell you insufficient materials and that means your mammoths will not have enough materials to make the item so don't have insufficient materials like i said use the material allocation tab to see what you're lacking 
So make sure that you utilize 4 a.m. to 3 a.m. time slots. Otherwise, you're going to be losing on profit and experience. The other thing is your tools for your mammoths. This is a one-time thing, and also you have your personal gathering tools, which is a one-time thing. So you make sure you want to make these as soon as possible. So right now we have basic mammoth size building tools, which is given to us at rank four. And that gave me 675 experience points. So now what we can do is build our second path to get our first landmark. Now the landmarks are used in increasing your groove for your mammoths during the handicrafts which means that they will make more than one item, which also gives you more experience and more blues, which you are going to be needing. So this is going to cost you 500 calories to make or produce. So of course you're going to have to pay him. Yes. So the path is going to be instant. And now we have access to our first site and we gain the level. Obviously I was always already three fourths way to the next level anyway. So that gave me 2,025 experience points, which is not bad. So now we have access to our first site. So now we have access to either a windmill or a tree fort. Don't worry, you can switch them around when you unlock the other landmarks. So I have access to either or. So I'm just going to make a tree fort for now, and this is going to take 11 to 12 hours. All right, so that basically concludes all the time-gated methods of gaining experience. All right, so now I'm gonna go into the island and I'm gonna show you guys where to get the apples and the vines since they go together. And then I'm also gonna show you guys where to get clams for the fry clams and also where to get the sand for the fire sand because that's what you're gonna be doing to get quick experience from your handicrafts and your workshop. All right. All right guys, so here we are in the open. So right about here is where the apple trees will start. And you will get one apple and one vine and we got 10 experience. So right about here at X 18.1, Y 26.5 is where you will start. And then we'll follow the pattern. So there's an apple tree over here. Then there would be one across from it. Then you're going to come over here to the other ridge and grab this apple tree here. And then you will rush over here and grab this one. And then you'll come over and grab this one. And then you're going to circle back and go back to the very first apple tree that you got. But before that, you need to get at least 10 items gathered so the 11th one will spawn in the first one that you gathered so i would recommend grabbing either the pumpkin seeds here or start grabbing some palm trees all right and that will take care of your apples and also with your vines now if you want vines specifically there is 11 node vines right here at this ridge one side and then you go to the other back and forth back and forth until you have enough vines to basically make your own hammock now for the clams you're going to be gathering them over there so it's going to be the pirate bay at x 16.6 y 10.2 all right so here we are in the pirates bay area so to descend underwater if you guys forgot it's just hitting the circle button if you're on a controller and whatever it is on keyboard and mouse, I don't remember. But you're gonna end up getting laver, or however you pronounce it, from the seaweed. And then the clams will also be down here as well. This is an annoying place because of the rock formations, but it's the only way to get your clams. Since we have very little items to make from handicrafts at this level, it's best to get what you can. So all here is where you're gonna get your clams and your laver as well.
All right, so over here, like I mentioned earlier, is where you're gonna get your cabbage seed, uh, seeds. So I wanted to show you guys where to find these as well. So make sure you get as many of these as possible. For your animal feed. And then also while you're in the general area, over here, as I mentioned earlier, is where you'll get your vines, specifically. So you have two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, ten, eleven for your vines. And then you can come back and forth, back and forth to get as many as you need. So the other things you guys are going to be needing is copper ore and stone. So right about here, X15.4, Y15.5, you'll have a crap ton of stones that you can gather. All right, so you can start from over here. So there's your limestone and your island stone. Then you can come over here, drop down, get your rock here, and over here. And then you can come over here and there's going to be more rock deposits except this one is going to have your copper so the bluish stones will have your copper ore which will get your stone as well so you want to farm these in order to expand your facilities i do have another spot which is going to be over here at x29.7 y28.2 but because of the ridge in the mountains it's a little bit hard to traverse without flying, so I recommend coming over to this spot because it has a very low elevation. And you want to stock up on these as well. And the last thing that I want to recommend you guys getting is the Isle Wart, which is going to be used for the potions. Alright, so for Island Wart, I do have a nice place to gather them. Also, you're going to be getting Rock Salt as well, since those are going to be a little bit out of your way. But by doing the, uh, the Isle of Wart route that I have here, you can go over to the Rock Salt to trigger these ones to come back so you guys can do them in a continuous loop. So it's going to be around Coral Sands Beach at X28.7, Y25.5, and it will start here. You're gonna make your way over to here and over here grab these two check your mini map on the, on the right side to see the little leaf icon and then you'll come over here grab this one come over here and grab this one and then you'll come over here and grab this one and they'll give you your Isle of wart and then you will come over here around the bend And then you'll come grab your rock salt in this cave. And you also get your stone as well, which you're going to be needing. So I might as well hit them all three at one time. So this is going to get you started on doing your basic handicraft. So the clam, the potions, and then the fire sand as well. And the best place to get your sand is going to be at the eastward stream all around here. You're going to be digging through the mud in order to get the sand for the fire sand recipe. And then when you're done with the rock salt, you will come back to that area and go all the way around the bend. So as you can see, all around the river here, we have mud plots. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. You got a rock there, so you can grab that for seven. You got one over there for eight, and you have one over there for nine, and you also can grab your apples and your vines while you're in the vicinity. So you want to get these for your sand, because you're gonna be needing sand for an upgrade as well. Also, when you hit rank five, make sure that you make your shovel, which I'm gonna do right now. when you do your sand you can now gather clay because you need clay as well 
Now, I believe if you do the ones underwater, I think they give you something else. Yes, tin sand. Make sure you also grab some tin sand, which is going to be under the water. So this is where you're going to get your clay and your sand once you make your shovel. You also can start getting parsnips and popotos, which I highly recommend you also grow as well to have a wide variety of items. All right, so here we are in the gentle slope area. Now, as you can see on the mini map right here, these are all parsnips. If you go a little bit further north, all right here is going to be popotos, where the chocobos are. So make sure you grab a couple parsnips right here. This is going to be in the vicinity of the ores and stuff, so you guys can double down on both. So you don't have to go too far. You also get on wart, so you guys can kill two birds with one stone while getting your parsnips. And then the papotos will be further down. And there's your papoto set. Also, the reason why you want the tin sand is for the better mammoth sized building tools. So make sure that you get your tin clay, your tin tin sand, the palm logs are going to be from the palm trees, the copper ore, which I just showed you where to get those, and then your limestone. So I need eight more island clay and then nine more tin sand to make this, because then you are going to be able to get your next area which is going to be right about here and then you're able to unlock your first granary which is going to be basically the mammoths are going to go gather your materials for you and also bring back a rare material that you will be needing for future upgrades for your landmark and for your facility so basically that's going to cover all the materials that you're going to be needing to get started with so as you're gathering, you're going to be getting 10 points of experience every single time. So if you just click your brain off for a moment and just start gathering all the materials, you will get like almost half a level just by doing that. So while you're waiting for all the time gated stuff to get done, you'll be out there gathering materials to prepare for more handicrafts and upgrades. Always check your manage hideaway to know if something can be upgraded or not. And you also can see what is going to be completed and also if there is a way to upgrade your facilities they will tell you exactly what you need in this menu and if you're not sure if you have enough materials you'll pay attention to this so i am out of vine because i need more for my handicraft so i'm gonna to have to make sure that i get at least two more vines to satisfy my demand so that's how you can check if you're deficient or if you have enough is by checking your allocation and one last thing before I forget you're looking for branches for the nets these little old trees here the little skinny ones they're gonna give you your branches but they're also gonna give you your island logs the fatter ones will give you logs and also sap so just keep that in mind if you're looking for those materials the fat ones and the skinny ones are they're going to be for that. You're going to find them in the wild area around X21.8, Y23.9. Alright guys, so basically that's about it. You upgrade your stuff, expand your hideaway, gather in between, and if you're done with all that and you don't want to do any of this, just walk away and come back when all your time-gated stuff is completed. I did this, it took me about, I would say, almost a week to get from level 1 to 10 because knowing me I had nothing else better to do so I just grind it out as much as humanly possible and also make sure that you continue to craft your feed from your apples that's the only thing apples are used for so don't worry about wasting them and I managed to get 80 because I made 8 you also make sure that you do your nets as well if you're bored you can start crafting as well just make sure that you don't leave your mammoths without materials but other than that, guys, that's basically all you need to know how to level up on your island sanctuary. Just remember, everybody has the same method of leveling up, so nobody has an advantage over you. Alright, the only advantage is the knowledge. 
So guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this useful. Any comments, questions, and or concerns, please put them in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out with any questions you might have. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new for more Final Fantasy XIV content and join the first brood. As a reminder, make sure you hit the notification bell next to my subscribe button. It's where you guys never miss an upload. And join my Discord server by hitting the world icon on my YouTube banner or going to the about section of my YouTube channel. If you guys want to support my content further, I do have YouTube memberships available. Both are completely optional. So until next time, may you forever walk in the glorious light of Lord Bahamut. And always remember to keep forging ahead. Literally. Happy leveling.